Hi everyone, this is our lecture on signs of common hip and knee conditions, so let's get started. So, on our list of common hip and knee conditions, we're going to look at trochanteric bursitis, the unhappy triad, prepatellar bursitis, and the Baker's cyst. First off is trochanteric bursitis. Now, this is a condition of bursal inflammation that commonly occurs in runners, often females, due to repetitive trauma caused by the iliotibial band, or the IT band, tracking over the lateral aspect of the trochanteric bursa. Now, here in the image, you can see that the iliotibial band down here is reflected to reveal the deeper structures. Now, the bursa itself is located superficial to the hip abductors and deep to the IT band. Now, quickly, which muscles function to cause hip abduction? You're right if you said mainly the gluteus medius and minimus. And these muscles are innervated by which nerve? Yep, the superior gluteal nerve. Now, finally, what classic sign is present when this nerve is damaged or disrupted? Good, Trendelenburg sign. And this occurs when the patient stands on one leg and the pelvis drops to the contralateral side due to the weakened hip abductors in the stance leg. All right, so back to the image. Due to the repetitive trauma caused by the overlying IT band, patients will generally have point tenderness near the posterior superior aspect of the greater trochanter. Now on a test, you might be presented with a patient that can no longer sleep on her side or sit in a position that puts pressure on her hips because it's these activities that become symptomatic. Now, treatment is initially conservative, which includes stretching of that IT band, anti-inflammatories, and heating pads. Now, let's take a look at this knee. If I told you this knee was a football player's, could you imagine how that happened? Now, if this is what you're thinking, you're right. What is the unhappy triad? Now, imagine your favorite football player that's running for the end zone. To stop him, a defending player may dive through his legs, often from the side. Now, the resulting hit to the lateral portion of the knee would cause three injuries. The first two are ligamentous, to the MCL and to the ACL. See how these components sustain stress from a lateral hit? Now the third is meniscal, to the medial meniscus. Now, in the unhappy triad, it is the medial meniscus that is torn along with the ACL and the MCL. However, if you get a question that asks you what injury is most commonly associated with an isolated ACL tear, the answer is the lateral meniscus. Now let's just take some time to digest that. If an unhappy triad occurs, it's the ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus. This makes sense because a portion of the medial meniscus fibers, they're actually attached to the deep fibers of the MCL. So with one goes the other. Now, the patient will present with acute knee pain and signs of joint injury or instability. Now, however, if a question is specific enough and asks you to provide an associated injury for an isolated ACL tear, meaning the MCL, PCL, and other major ligaments of the knee are still intact, then the answer is the lateral meniscus. A lateral knee injury in a contact sport is probably the most common way this is presented in question stems. Now, next up, we have prepatellar bursitis. Now, prepatellar bursitis is also known as housemaid's knee because it's usually caused by extensive kneeling, and the bursa over the patella gets inflamed and painful. This is a superficial anterior problem as you can see in the images below. Now, a Baker cysts, on the other hand, that's a posterior problem. It's a popliteal fluid collection. 
Now, cis is actually a misnomer because it's actually usually in the open communication with the synovial space. A bigger cyst usually results from chronic joint disease. If the bigger cyst gets large enough, can it obstruct important structures? It sure can. Now, a bigger cyst rarely can result in a DVT like in the picture in the middle below. All right, so which would you rather have, a baker cyst or prepatellar bursitis? Now, I think I'd go with prepatellar bursitis since it doesn't have the dire but rare complication of a DVT. But that being said, both conditions are benign. Well, that's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.